If you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right, come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and fuck off, OK? <laughs> so... It's already three hours long. But actors aren't just loved here in Hollywood. They are loved the world over because they're recognisable. You can be anywhere. You could be in the third world, OK, and you get a glimpse of a Hollywood star and it makes you feel better, OK? You could be a little, a little child, a little Asian child with no possessions and no money, but you, get a, you see a picture of Angelina Jolie and you think, oh, Mummy! <laughs> There were a lot of big films that didn't get nominated this year. Nothing for Sex in the City 2. Um, no, I was sure the Golden Globe for special effects would go to the team that airbrushed that poster. Um, <laughs> well, great job. Girls, we know how old you are. I saw one of you in an episode of Bonanza. <laughs> On a serious note, just looking at all the faces, here it reminds me of some of the great work that's been done this year by cosmetic surgeons. Um, <laughs> but you all look lovely, all doled up, you came here in your limos. I came here in a limo tonight and the license plate was made by Felicity Huffman. So, no, shush. It's her, it's her daughter I feel sorry for, okay? That must be the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to her. And her dad was in Wild Hogs. So, but as I say, I'm gonna be nice tonight. I've changed. Not as much as Bruce Jenner, obviously. <laughs> now Caitlyn Jenner, of course. What a year she's had. She became a role model for trans people everywhere, showing great bravery in breaking down barriers and destroying stereotypes. She didn't do a lot for women drivers, but... <laughs> In a little while, we're going to see a, a short clip from The Irishman. Um, it's 88 minutes long. <laughs> so. It was a big year for 3D movies. Toy Story, Despicable Me, Tron. Seems like everything this year was three-dimensional. Except the characters in The Tourist. Um, <laughs> I, I feel bad about that joke. I, no, no, I'll tell you why. I'm jumping on the bandwagon, because I haven't even seen The Tourist. <laughs> Who has? Um, but, no. Our next presenters are two of the funniest people in America. She stole the show on Saturday Night Live, then went on to create, write and star in her own show, 30 Rock. He was a jobbing actor, career not going that well, if I'm being totally honest, who... <laughs> who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. He's now leaving that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome the wonderful Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell! You probably know me as the creator of The Office. <laughs> no, you don't, do you? You think Steve Carell did it all? Oh. He's brilliant, isn't he, Steve Carell? <laughs> He's amazing as the bumbling office manager. Where does he get his ideas from? <laughs> Let's pay. Talking of all you perverts, it was a big year... It was a big year for paedophile movies. Um, surviving R. Kelly, Leaving Neverland, Two Popes... <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. Our next presenter is the star of the hilarious comedy The Martian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I nearly died. Right. He's also the only person who Ben Affleck hasn't been unfaithful to. Please welcome Matt Damon. Thank you. Um, yeah. 
And I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumour going round that the only reason the Taurus was nominated was so the Hollywood Foreign Press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is, that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. Let's... <laughs> No one cares about movies anymore. No one goes to the cinema. No one really watches network TV. Everyone's watching Netflix. This show should just be me coming out going, well done, Netflix, you win everything. Good night. But no, no, we've got to drag it out for three hours. You could binge watch the entire first season of Afterlife instead of watching this show. That, that's a show about a man who wants to kill himself because his wife dies of cancer. And it's still more fun than this, OK? <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, season two is on the way, so in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Shut up! I know he's your friend, but I don't care. <laughs> also not nominated, I love you, Philip Morris, um, Jim, Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, two heterosexual actors pretending to be gay. So the complete opposite of some famous Scientologist, then. Um, <laughs> well, Probably. The Irishman was amazing. It was amazing. Um, that, it was. My fact, my, it was great. Uh, long, but amazing. Um, it wasn't the only epic movie. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, nearly three hours long, Leonardo DiCaprio attended the premiere, and by the end, his date was too old for him. So... <laughs> Even Prince Andrew's like, come on, Leo, mate, you know. <laughs> you're nearly 50, son. Um, our next presenter is the Queen of Pop. Not you, Alton. Sit down. This is... She's all woman. I'll give you some clues. She's always vogue. She's a material girl. And she's just like a virgin. <clears throat> Please welcome Madonna. If I'm still just like a virgin, Ricky, then why don't you come over here and do something about it? I haven't kissed a girl in a few years. On TV. Honestly, I like a drink as much as the next man. <laughs> Unless the next man is Mel Gibson. <laughs> Talking of The Walking Dead, congratulations to Hugh Hefner, who, uh, who's getting married at the age of 84 to 24-year-old beauty Crystal Harris. Um, when she was asked why she was marrying him, she said because he lied about his age. He told me he was 94. Oh, come on. Um, don't worry. Hold out and just, just don't look at it when you touch it. That's done. <laughs> One thing that can't be bought is a Golden Globe. Officially. <laughs> I'm not going to do this again anyway. Um, <laughs> but if you were <laughs> to buy one, the man to see would be Philip Burke. <laughs> to... <laughs> the world got to see James Corden as a fat pussy. <laughs> he was also in the movie Cats, but <laughs> no one saw that. Um, and the reviews, oh, shocking. I saw one that said, this is the worst thing to happen to cats since dogs, right? <laughs> but Dame Judi Dench defended the film, saying it was the role she was born to play, because she... I can't do this next joke. 
because she loves nothing better than plonking herself down on the carpet, lifting her leg and licking her own minge. <laughs> furball, furball. She's old school. Um, <laughs> it's the last time, who cares? Our first presenter is beautiful, talented, and Jewish, apparently. Mel Gibson told me that, he's obsessed. Um, <laughs> please welcome Scarlett Johansson. Our next presenter starred in Netflix's Bird Box, a movie where people survive by acting like they don't see a thing. Sort of like working for Harvey Weinstein. You did it, you, I didn't, you did it. Shut the fuck up. 